I am currently here vibing with Jamaica's first female child star. Her parents named her Nadine Sutherland and today she shares her story. Empress Nadine, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am okay. A long time we try for this. Long time. Oh this is the third time. <laughs> everything up everything up for a reason. Yeah. The third time is a charm. Yeah, the third time is a charm. Teach them is my baby face. They got some cute baby face. Teach them is my baby face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now listen now. Teach them. Teach them. Always make sure the message I reach them. Miss Sutherland. Yeah. Looking young and fresh, I must say. Oh my God, and tomorrow is my birthday. Tomorrow is your birthday. Oh yeah, oh yeah it's my <laughs> birthday. <laughs> and all your plan to celebrate? Well, just few people over with a cake, mm -hmm. um, buy some food and drink some wine and just yeah. don't make nothing take away my joy. Mm -hmm. No coronavirus will take Care away my share. joy. Care to share, oh, young will you be tomorrow? <laughs> no, actually, if you Google it, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not going to say it today, yes. right? But I have, because of... Uh, one good thing about fame yes. is that um, before I reach a specific age, mm -hmm. my whole story was, was on there. Google. Yes. So Google me, people, and you'll see my age. I know the ear of your bones, I'm not in. I can't do the maths. Yeah, I'm just not in the mood <laughs> to say today, all right? But I must say, based on when I know you were born to how you're looking now, mm. you have done a fabulous job at taking care of yourself. Thank you so very much. Yeah, I do take care of myself. Yes. So let's start now, though. Early life, place of birth. I was born, my mother said I was born on, in Brentford Avenue. I was born on a Friday. I'm a Friday baby. I was born in the morning. So I was born in a Kingston, but I grew up in Above Rocks. Oh, my, upper Saint, um, yeah, my, mm. um, my father, you know, bought a piece of land and started constructing his house. Yes. So all of us were, we were all, me and my brothers and my sister, were taken up to Above Rocks. And, that's where I identify with. Mm -hmm. I, I feel more rural in my spirit than yes. urban. What was it like growing up in Above Rocks though back then? Rivers, hills, gullies, running up and down. I was saying to somebody that I've gotten so stush because, uh, you know, I <laughs> ran barefooted, you know. <laughs> Down the gully, yeah. barefooted, and now I'm like, I'm so swish, I just, I have to have on slippers. Mm. And then, I just think about it because we had to commute every day to Kingston. Yes. And, uh, no, I'm bathing in warm water. <laughs> and them days there, you know, when cool. I have the water, you know, you have to put the drum outside. Side. And your man in time, cool, have a beard, <laughs> go to school, and now my turn. So I was like, I'm so stush. Yeah. Siblings? <laughs> I have... Uh, how much are we? All right, let me <laughs> four, three, seven. I, I bought one. My mom, I'm speaking about my brother, my first brother. Yes. Um, transitioned very, okay. very early in life. My condolences. I'm speaking about you. I'm speaking about you. I don't know him. He <laughs> yeah, died at, didn't know him. like several months mm, in. And all of them were from mommy and daddy? No. No, all of them weren't from mommy. No, you drove a my thing. But I don't really view them. To me, family, if you act like family, you're, you're my family. family. I don't mm. really think about, I'm not, I don't, I really don't think about that you're, thing, we share. So I don't believe in the half thing, unless yes. you act to me like a half sister, or yes. you act to me like an enemy. Okay, okay. So I don't believe in that kind of drama. We're yes. blood, we're blood. Mommy and daddy still around? Yes, thank God for that. Awesome. I'm very, very lucky. Yes. And being that this year is 40 years of my music, music career. Yes. And mommy and daddy still around. That's one of the blessings for me because daddy and mommy was there from the foundation. My father was always beside me mm -hmm. through it all. Mommy went to the States when I was 12, yeah. actually. 40 years ago, my mother went to the States very, very early in my career. Mm -hmm. So my father was always there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And both of them are okay. Both of them are okay. Thank God, you know, still there. It's a blessing. It's, it's a real big blessing that, you know, I've been walking through all these years in my, in my, of my life with my parents still beside me. Jenny have a joke. She said, I can't get no man because daddy dip on the right side and mommy dip on the left side. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I'm stepping. I'm yeah. sandwiched between my mommy parents, even now. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm happy for that because, you know, that's the team and yes. that's it. Schooling. Okay, I started... Nanny Basic School, when we live at Walton, Nanny, Nanny Basic School. Basic school. <laughs> then I went to Gem Preparatory School. Yeah. And I went to Michael Practicing All Age. Yeah. And I, um, I went to St. Andrew High School for, for girls. girls. Then Exit Community College. No, 
I did go, wait name? Oh, yeah, Exit Community College. Started extramural thinking that I was going to go to University of the West Indies. That's mm -hmm. with PR. Yes. Probably for three months. So I was doing very good. I was getting my B's. And then I started <laughs> <laughs> getting back in the music, doing background vocals with Gussie. And then it was a big pause. But I have to say, when I went to England, I did get into law school. Yes. Because I did, at Exit, I got um, AEB Law. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I went to England, you know, I, when I started trying to get a recording deal, and I auditioned for Soul to Soul. I oh, said, you auditioned for Soul to Soul? I got the part, okay? Mm. No, be tired, listen to me. <laughs> After Karen Wheeler was going to be in Edin Sutherland, all right, people? Yeah. Just, just, just take your seat. <laughs> got into law school there because I have AB Law. And uh, again, always just like, the, you know, my, my career just the music. Started, Yeah, the mm -hmm, music mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. never really like um, done any like tertiary education. And then yes. when I got older, and all of that. You know, you did some like a computer courses. Mm -hmm. I decided that I was going for my master's. Yes. And uh, the University of the West Indies had a program, or have, that people, you know, you have to have your sexy. Thank mm -hmm. God my parents insisted that I had a basic education. Yes. Um, you have to have your sexy and that um, they would uh, allow people who are practitioners in the music. Oh, but okay. you had to go through a route. Okay, okay. The route was that you did some, um, undergraduate courses mm. and if you ace that they would promote you yes. dependent on that they would promote you to doing a master's okay i more than ace that because i so wanted to get my degree mm. and i got that and then after i got that i just did my master's mm. and came up with my master's your degree is in what business business administration no, my degree is in cultural studies cultural studies mm -hmm. and the second degree is in no i didn't just go just straight. just straight no crowd of people made it easy enough <laughs> Then put me in our master's program and me do it. All right? Don't joke with me. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations no, I didn't get no first on degree. that. I, didn't, yeah. I did undergraduate courses. Okay, okay. And they looked at in terms of uh, if I would be um, capable of just doing a master's. Mm -hmm. And I aced it and go and do my master's and I, got, I did it. Yeah, and that is awesome because when you, when you started studying again, when you, when you started doing your master's, quote unquote, in Jamaica, you said Nadine was a big woman. Big, big, big woman. I mean, I went, child, when I did the undergrad, I was like the elder in the class. Yeah. <laughs> when I did the undergraduate um, bachelor's courses, I was the elder in the class. And I must say, I don't know if any of the kids remember me, mm. but it was so gracious and so nice. I yes. didn't, you know, they taught me a lot where you was concerned, you know, here I was. Irrespective that I was an elder, yes. I was still a youngster when they come on to university and yes, yes, um, yes. stuff and they were so nice. Miss Sutherland, you must do this with Sutherland. And even, you know, um, I don't even, I hope they remember me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I had some incredible young people that was extremely um, wonderful in my undergraduate. I could, you know, I could be their mommy. And my <laughs> master's program, I had some incredible, we were so tight. Yeah. We were so supportive of mm. each other. and you know, so invested in each other's success. So I was very lucky where so that So like you enjoyed that period of your life? You know, I love learning. Mm. I enjoy learning. Um, I wanted, I'm, well, I don't even know when I'm going to do that PhD because mm. I, my cousins <laughs> think I'm weird. And my <laughs> young cousin thinks that, like, auntie, you love to study. I'm like, no, not really, but I love to learn. Yes. Like so many things that I've learned about life, about myself as an artist, yes. about Jamaica, about history, about culture. Mm -hmm. It's just been, was a fascinating journey, irrespective that you had to write a paper after. Yes. But in terms of what I learned, in terms of how you speak, I speak, in terms of how we show up in, uh, in the world as Caribbean people, in the world, in, and how we have impacted on each other. It just was a wonderful experience and still is. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But the general population now knows Nadine as a musician, mm -hmm. an entertainer. How yes. did you get involved in this music? I didn't get involved with music. Music involved me. It, it really <laughs> somewhere from I know myself. Yes. It was just like a part of me, a part of something. You know, when I was younger, I used to I felt even more like a dancer than a singer. Yes. Just so I went up myself still playing and said, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, like as a baby girl, I remember, you probably don't know who's who like me. Mm. You're right. <laughs> but we used to, every Sunday, they used to have on TV, like, you know, two were very so European mm. indoctrinized. Yes. You used to have on TV the Royal Bali and then mm. Alvin Hill, and there I was, it's like a skinny little girl doing everything. And then, what could I do? The Bashment dance to 
poor old grandmother never ever like that. And catch me out of road in front of jute box or in front of sound box, me missing at the house. Yeah. <laughs> and I made that scan cut myself. So that's what really happened and I was always singing. Yes. So they always knew that I was always singing like, you know, when I was like age four they met me sing at church and put so i was i was just always this mm. kid that was born with it i, I know nothing else but singing and dancing yes. in terms of my natural things so that's why i came I natural for you right so because of that them always i met me sing about sing about the place my parents were extremely like sometimes she can't sing it up but you know you're looking for your little girl <laughs> can't sing and get you props here yes there. yes so what happened is that when I went up to Above Rocks to live, there was um, a young man called Horace Martin. I remember very much when he came up, which was very kind of him. He came yes. up the hill and he said to daddy, you know, said them about a, 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 a talent contest at all called TST. Mm. And he just won his quarterfinals. Oh, awesome. Yeah, but he and I used to sing around the community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when they had, you know, when I was a little girl, yes. I was just singing all the, ee, 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 always just singing. It was just like, since I make not even enter and everything, so I went and uh, it, it, when he told me, I guess we found out the information. Yes. It was time for one of the quarterfinals, mm -hmm. which was in July. Okay. So and that was July 1979. Nine, right. Mm -hmm. So we went before. I don't know when I auditioned, which month, but I remember going in front of people them down at Tasty and I think I sang Africa we want figo. I sang that, come on, my black brother. And then, you know, I was like, okay, then tell me goodbye. And they said that we eat on a crowd mm. of people. You know, so we're very historic and archaic. <laughs> we eat on a telegram. We're not a even telegram. letting nobody do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the post office so we on, on a telegram. telegram. I <laughs> lived, because remember it was summer holidays. Yeah, yes. I was July. living down above Rock's um, post office. Every day I walk down to Above Rock's post office. You have a telegram for me? Until one day that telegram came and I opened it. You um you have reached the I yeah, remember advanced. you have reached the quarterfinals, July quarterfinals for TC Talent Contest. So I ran home, waited and show my mommy, she showed daddy. So at that time we never really used to, we come to Kingston, you know, but there, you know, it, it's a funny thing. Above Rocks is so close to Kingston, mm. but we're so rural then. It's yes, not like a day above Rocks now. Oh yes. my God. <laughs> so I'm a little salesman. We'll come, we'll come once a week, and that little blue dress that you see, you know, in there, the pictures. Right, that little light blue dress was my, the dress mommy bought from me for the salesman to go sing a tasty talent contest, which I happened to win yes. the quarterfinals, mm -hmm. which meant you won the quarterfinals. I was in the grand finals mm -hmm. in July 1979. And there I was waiting on that day, just first form, the first three months of St. Andrews High School mm -hmm. for Girls, just finished past common entrance that same summer. Yeah. It was really something else because that same summer, what happened is that I don't care, I remember when I told you. <laughs> but come and entrance had to come out two times because the, they said, what well, was something like they didn't have the space? Oh. And they, get, they, they, they made access for some kids. And there was a big brouhaha, people cuss up, cuss up. So the single time when they came in the newspaper, like the, I won Tasty Talent Contest the night, and my brother ran up the hill, I never forget Gary, and said, You pass for St. Andrew. And he passed for Walmart's voice. School. Awesome. So, awesome. like, I won Tasty and then I passed for St. Andrew. Mm, good summer. Yeah, it was a great summer. <laughs> Went to school September, both off for everybody, then laugh off for me. Stood up and go, My name is Nadine, and I'm an amateur singer. I'm gonna just pop down the place, guy, everybody start laugh off for me. <laughs> By December, my winter is oh, yeah, right. contest. Anyway, and the, the finals that year involve Paul Blake and Yellow the great Man, Yellow Man, Horace Martin, yeah. and you manage to emerge victorious by one point. By one point. <laughs> one point or two points. Yeah. I don't remember. They told me the other day that I won by one or two points, mm. and uh, um. Yeah, I went there and I sang Buckingham Palace. And Buckingham they, Palace. I didn't know if it was about ganja split or what. <laughs> That's Peter Touches Buckingham like, Palace. Doo -doom, doo. I know I was doing my Tina Turner impersonation. Yeah. Doo -doom, doo. And there I was and I won. I don't know. 
and somebody was there from Tough Gang. And yeah, that was Bob Marley's label at the time. Right, mm. and they, new they, label. They, yeah, it was just like almost when I look at my life, you know, it really was just like I just believe in predestiny and all mm. of that because I think Sangi was saying that they should go with the second place winner, and Darren Jobson, which I always have to speak about, he said, "No, I want a little girl." That was Bob Marley attorney. Mm -hmm. Moana, like a girl. Yeah, Diane. Right. Yeah. Mm. So I, yeah, that's how I ended up at Tough Gang. It's like, it's like some flukes, flukes, flukes that just happened that gave me this destiny. Yes, but let's talk a little bit more about the the, the, the finals, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a little girl, you're about eleven at the time. I was eleven. Yeah, eleven, and you were going up against adults in some I instances. Was. Weren't you intimidated? No because music, singing and dancing was my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I really wasn't even like invested in like competing. Yes, I was just more fun. invested in acting like Tina Turner. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it really wasn't like, you know, I go there and it was like, oh my God, I have to win. Mm -hmm. It was, oh my God, I have to do, do, be feisty <laughs> and strut yeah. my stuff and like, do, do. that just really was more to me and probably mm -hmm. that's Probably that's what really gave me the edge. Yeah. Which wasn't well, a big edge anyway. When you felt, when, 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 when you learned that you won though, how did you feel? You remember that? No, I don't think there was any grand elation oh, okay. or anything like that. What was the prize? It was a year supplier party, which <laughs> I have not even finished. <laughs> I don't even about to scratch the edge. I was so like <laughs> back in the days, first of all. <laughs> first of all. <laughs> Me and my Andrew's friend, but we're too stush you now. Yes. I'm like, have a year supplier party. I will get down to Tasty. But my, you know, my school wouldn't even allow that. Oh, Probably okay. like a one or two. I, will, I get party for everyone. Mm -hmm. I just not even, I told them don't taste it. Like, you know, I've never even scratched the dent of that one year supplier party. Then, was it towards a cash prize? I think there was a cash prize. And then the recording contract at yeah. Tough Gang. Okay, oh, so a part of the winnings was a recording contract at Tough Gang. Right. Oh. But my mm. one year supplier party, I know my <laughs> one. <laughs> so Bob Marley saw okay. young Nadine. I saw Bob as a little girl. Mm. I, I, I'll never forget that day. I walked into Tough Gang and I was met by, we stood there and we met them called Dan. Dan mm -hmm. running, I said, yeah, smiling and everything. So we like, get Bob. And I'm standing there and my, you know, I, I'm sure like my father is, before we, he met Bob, he was a, I grew up Pan-African, it's like Bob yes. Marley and Peter Todd. He's a man of the seventies, you know? Yeah. You know, so enough Bob are playing at the house and all. It's just like one of, it was really uncanny. I was listening to Marcy and all, you know, really like grown, you know, with the Marcus Garvey teachings and all of those Pan-African Pan ideals. Mm -hmm. So I remember Bob Marley and I was like, my father must have been like, this is a dream because mm. that was like before he, he with that opportunity came he, it was like his favorite artist yes so i um she said come go meet bob and i'll never forget it's like as an adult there's certain memories the memories with bob are some of the memories that i go over in my head and yes. the reason why is that for them to stay because mm -hmm. i don't even want them to not stay and uh, there he was in dark denim that's Bob yeah. right beside him Jeep the Jeep and he just like I heard Dan say see the little girl there Bob and he just smiled at me and I'm there looking at him but I wasn't in awe yes my father now was yeah because your father understood and appreciated right. Bob for what he was at the time right me I'm mm. an 11 year old kid <laughs> just that soon on has go for girls yeah and totally you know wanting to be like part of the high school for girls. So meeting Bob was just like, but now in terms of how I honor that moment mm. and honor him and just feel totally just like sometimes surreal yes. that I even had the opportunity to, you know, my first recording session, he was there. Yes. That's... Putting me on a stool with oh, yeah, starvation on, a on starvation the land. On the land. Yeah. You know, I, you know, and having those fleeting memories of him. So he because, was in the studio when he recorded that song. And I didn't know. I didn't know that he was. I mean, the project was given to Sangi. Mm -hmm. And I remember I'm standing there um, totally the first time, you know, like <laughs> a deer in the headlight. 
because I've never had a recording session. And, you know, at that time, they were pretty kind to me. Sangi come and, you know, he wrote the song. Mm. Ooh, yeah, 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 starvation on the land. And I had to go there like Saturdays. Yes. Some Saturdays before we recorded mm -hmm. and learn the song and uh, um, go into the studio, stand in there, and put something over my head, which I know now as well. Head Careful. forward. <laughs> and um, put me in front of the mic, and I'm, you know, that was, I think I felt a little bit nervous then, because yes. man and man coming in, and mm -hmm. saying, giving them directions, and I'm there, and then in walk ball, put up on a chair no. And they put me on a chair, and I'm like, oh my God, no, I know Dean. That was always this question, no, I know Dean. And then I understand why, because, yes. you know, he was a big man yes, to me. Yes, you're right. And I was a kid. Child. Yeah. But then I understood the sensitivity as a person who really went through a lot. Mm. You know, as a musician, them call themselves the whaler, like Eman Peter and Bonnie, mm. because they had to wail. Yeah, it's it's a stole from them. <laughs> so, Starvation on the Land was recorded, right? Mm -hmm. How well did that song do, though? Starvation, I think, went to, oh God, I never even knew I was into politics. <laughs> so I was this 11 year old kid. Yeah. And it was 1980, the worst election you could have ever imagined when Mana kill man. All right, just enough, made it in an orange. Smile would have killed me. Because that's how but it was. volatile Jamaica was. Man just a kill man for JLP or PNP, pure foolishness. And I remember that Starvation on the Land was supposed to be a number one song. It went to number two. And after I heard that, people thought that it was a political song mm. that was critiquing the government of the day. Yes. And as somebody was like, she's an 11 year old child. Mm. So probably be, you know, I'm just like, it's crazy, crazy, cult, crazy history yes. of politics we have had. That's just so bizarre. Mm -hmm. The Starvation on the Land was released during the heights of the 1980s political turmoil in the country. Mm -hmm. And persons now were of the view that it was um, politically directed, especially considering right. the fact that at the time, persons had Bob as being pro-PNP. But the funniest thing, Bob is pro-PNP and was writing tunes that were basically critiquing Babylon and critiquing everything. Yes. But I don't know what in what regards that, you know, probably people were so... I see there was a time that people I think went crazy with this politics thing. You know, they went a little bit mad. Yes. And probably by the time it came out, it was close to the elections, which I remember the elections was in October. Starvation I heard was released May the first. Okay. So it was basically in that kind of energy and environment mm -hmm. of just like foolishness. Yes. Thank God we've grown past that. Yes. Was that the only song you recorded for Tough Gong before Bob unfortunate departure? Um, I recorded Starvation, and while he was going through his stuff, I recorded sick. A Young One Like Me. A Young One Like Me. Where were you, though, when, when you heard the news that Bob died? You know, I was a child. It's a funny oh, you're thing. Still, they, yes. they kept everything away from me. Mm. It's one of the weirdest things when people have asked me that question. I remember um, when Bob was in Germany, and Diane Jobson came to me. Diane Jobson was on the phone, and she got Bob, Bob, I'm not in. And I went on the phone and the usual thing, how you doing, you all right? And I, and I didn't even know. Mm, that he was. I didn't even know what was happening. I said, yeah, man, I totally was oblivious to what was, of going, what on. was going on with Bob <laughs> in terms of his illness. Totally oblivious to that. I mean, big people didn't tell you not tell little picnic yes, nothing. That is, that is so true. Say, yeah, little picnic, that you don't know true. big people something. Mm -hmm. I just saw the thing set when you're like a picnic, oh, me go, Kawa, you're like a picnic, you don't know about big people something. Mm -hmm. So by the time, like, I guess I, I learned, I was at St. Andrew High School for Girls, and I remember going home and my grandmother go, you know, said Bob passed, and it was on the radio, and I'm like, oh my God, and daddy came home and we're sad. I remember being really sad. I w the thing that I, I will never forget, the most bizarre thing, when Bob transitioned, this is how I felt when I went to Tough Gang. I felt the walls were crying in terms of the sadness. People were like this. For years, people could not move. People were stunned. It took years, even me, like living as a big woman. Yes. It took years for some people to even adjust years after to the passing of Bob Marley. Trust and believe. So Mrs. Marley had to take up all of that mess and 
make it work and try and move forward. Yes. And she tried to make it move forward. Like the project that started with my album was finished when she took the rim. She's like, we have to finish this album because Bob wanted this to be done. Yes. And that's how my album, my first album, Nadine until with me with a straw hat. <laughs> <laughs> So that's really what happened Yes. from my eyes. So starvation on the land and a young one like me, more than love a piece of both of those tracks. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't really get the little girl voice. So yeah, man, give me the big Nadine more heart, man. All right, a young, a young one like me. There's so many things I'd like to see. Cause I'm growing and knowing and showing the beauty of love in me. And if all the people in this wide, wide world could live in harmony, how wonderful that would be to a young one like me. Okay, that was a young one like me. <laughs> and they get into starvation mode. Everybody thinks it was a little, like, little rebel, you know, when I sang starvation. <laughs> Poor me, I never even know what I was saying. <laughs> I get into the dancing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Starvation on the land, yeah. So if you can, help up your brother money, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sleeping children in the park, yeah. Got nowhere to go in the wee hours after dark, yeah. Next day, see them at the bus stop. Ten cents, not going to school. That makes no sense. Still, they're fighting for the rights. No pretense, even cleaning car windows at the stoplights. That's starvation. A long time, happen. people are clean. When she oh last supply. When I sang Starvation, it just began. <laughs> oh. When I sang Starvation, it was a new phenomenon yeah. in Jamaica. Oh, some 40 years ago. 40 years end. ago. It just started happening. Mm. Just started happening. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, so um, you did those songs before Bob transitioned. Right. Did you do anything with Bob or the Whalers before he died? No. In terms of touring or anything like that? No, I did shows with the Whalers after Bob. After died. Bob. Because okay. I was part of the Top Kong package. So we started, the first thing I did, I remember when they had uh, the first show in Miami. Yes. A memorial show for, for Bob. And it's Ziggy and, you know, the Whalers and the I3. Yes. And I was living my dream because I'm such a wannabe I3. And you know? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yes. So. I did shows with the Wheelers, I did shows with the I3 for several years, and I did show with um, the Melody Makers, mm -hmm. which eventually was named Ziggy Man, Ziggy Man and, and the Melody Makers. Makers yeah. um, do you ever wonder what direction your career would have taken if Bob had not passed? I wonder that every day. Mm. I wonder that every day because I know that <clears throat> he was trying to sign the whole Tough Gang package. There, there's, there's, there. There are um, stuff online with Bob talking about me, talking about Junior. There's stuff online. Yes. I've read that he was writing that, you know, there's this like, a girl, you know, and he was, I heard he was going to sign Tough Gang to Mr. Polygram or one of those stuff, mm -hmm, the whole thing, mm -hmm. and I was going to be in that package. So um, I don't know if he would have taken on full production. Yes. Because, you know, he, and I'm like, when I listen to Bob Marley music, I was like, oh my God, I wonder what it would have been yeah. for my life. Mm -hmm. But in terms that didn't happen, but I, you know, he's not here physically, but I believe that he still in some sense look up for me. Yes. You know, I really always think that, as I was thinking about it, and I'm like, I still think that you kind of look out for me, right, Bob? Mm. You really have a lot of time to spend with me, but yeah, I believe yeah. that. What was it like, though, after winning the Tastiest competition as a little 11-year-old girl and, you know, collided with stardom, per se? Was it? Life changing, or it was just, eh, when I look at things and life goes on. In my head, I thought that. Mm. In my head, I could not even, like, when I reflect back on me, um, I wish that somebody was there. You know, my parents, I can't even blame them because it must have been extremely life changing for them, too. Yes. You know, how, what do you say to a kid that is 
you, I couldn't even, didn't have the life experience to process it. Because mm -hmm. you're a child, all of a sudden everybody knows you. Yes. All the good and the bad that comes with that. People loving you, people liking you, people saying bad things about you and you're yes. a little girl. Mm -hmm. People having good expectations, some people having bad expectations. People dogging you, you know, and you are ingesting all of this mm -hmm. without processing it, without having any filters to say, all of a sudden, you know, I'm famous or mm -hmm. you can't. You're just yes. an individual that is absorbing all of that as yes. a child. Yeah. So that is the reason why, oh my God, I think I, I <laughs> broke the hands. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I kind of, oops, here it is. Yeah, I don't know. I understand Michael Jackson because you look at it and you're like, Michael Jackson, I didn't even have a quarter of his fame yes. or a quarter of the amount of people who that knew him, who, who, no, him. who was exploiting him oh. and who was like sending shots mm. at him or manipulating yes. him. And you know, when you look at that poor man at a certain time and how fragile he was and for the whole of his life, he just had people hounding him and destroying him. You know, I kind of just feel really bad for Michael Jackson. I still do. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe he's a child molester at all. Because yes. that don't really resonate in my spirit. Yes. So, um, being a star at that time had its challenges. Reflecting on yes. I was just going through it and not understanding it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Was it difficult to balance that and school? Not really, because I never really was doing any touring. You know, so that answer back my right to so. I wasn't really doing any major touring. Yes. You know, I was doing a lot of um, local, local shows. Local shows, yeah. Yeah, so it really was it's like, my life at that point was extremely simple mm -hmm. and totally not really exciting. Yes. Unlike what some other people think about my life, it was school, church, um, shows. Mm -hmm. If I went anywhere, it was my, my parents were very yes. protective, it was my auntie house. In, um, at that time, wherever my auntie was, I was allowed to go. But I never really had any, I never really had a grand social life mm -hmm. as a child. So mommy and daddy kept you grounded? Very much so, and I'm very happy to hear. Very happy now. Mm -hmm. Then I wasn't happy because I wanted to bash me out with my friend them. You know, and I wasn't allowed to a lot of stuff. And you look at it and I'm like, you know, in terms of, I'm pretty grounded. Yes. Because of some of the restrictions that were imposed on me. Yes. So. I read somewhere that you performed at Bob Memorial. The other day, yeah. Uh, how was that? It was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, mm. it was an incredible show. Starvation on the Land, A Young One Like Me, those were the early songs. Mm -hmm. When next did Nadine record a song that the masses took on to? A song called Until. Until. I will be loving you until the sun stops shining. I was like 15 then, they're like, make her sing a love tune. <laughs> you wrote it? No. no. Never wrote none of the songs. You never wrote none of them? Mm. Then. Yes. Then I never, I, um, it was until, that is still a classic. Yes. You still sing it and, you know, so. So, until, and that song again reintroduced you because it was a couple of years yeah, man. since Starvation right, but, and. Um, yeah. And then the album was released and... Mm. What was the name I, of the album? Until. Oh, the, so that was the title track right. for, the, for the album. And then, which I hated, they made me go into a festival with hands and hearts in harmony. <laughs> loving when I hate it. Why you hate that? I never hated the song. Oh. I just hated entering festival. Okay. Well, lad, <laughs> how did that song do the festival do? I must have come third. I never come dead last. I must have come third. <laughs> Raskabi did win. Yes. And when I check, no, that was Singer Stewart. Raskabi had a nice song that, you know, yeah. he, he won. Yeah. It was a very, very good song. Probably if they didn't take it seriously, they wouldn't be in that year. No, Hands on Earth was just not the song to just win. Just not the song. I appreciate the honesty. Was the song I to win. I appreciate the honesty. You know, Hands on Earth was popular and was popular after. My brothers used to tease me. Panana! 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 They used to come, my brother, and Panana! And then. <laughs> yeah, so after that door that the end, um was it difficult for you now to really and truly establish yourself now becoming a young adult into adulthood in the industry? 
Not really, because I had that track record mm -hmm. in terms of, but I came back in the, I went to Exed, mm -hmm. and again, as I said before, grappling to go to UE, and then I don't know how I ended up at Gussie. Yeah, Sir I don't Gussie know how Clark. I ended up in Gussie Clark, and then became, oh, no, no, I have to talk about Peter. Mm -hmm. That I work with Peter, like. As um, in the Peter Tosh? Like the Peter Tosh. Oh, like, okay. okay, you have to hear the story. People, <laughs> you gotta hear the story. Peter Touch, the supposedly dog eyed Peter Touch. Stepping Razor. Stepping Razor, where everybody afraid of, and it's known in history as, you know, dog, before Bounty. Yeah, before Bounty. <laughs> that was before a cross, man. Bounty. <laughs> yeah. Cross, angry, miserable. We had a Peter Touch, right? And Peter Touch was, uh, you know, people were watching me and thought I was pretty talented, mm -hmm. you know, and yes. Peter Touch went to my father and asked my father, if I can be a part of his album, No Nuclear War. Mm. Daddy come and say, Peter Tosh came to me and asked him to go for Peter Tosh house and I'm sitting on as man and man, I want your daughter. Mm. I went into the studio, that's when I was nervous because you know, Peter reputation. Yes. Peter reputation and who Peter Tosh was, was two different things. Okay. Peter okay. Tosh was the most kindest, most gentlest, most patient, person. Here I am, I think I was in six commercial. I'm, I'm in white, that time I wear like white shirt and tie and melica skirt. You know, six forms out, go and sitting down. Peter Tosh was so kind and he was like loving and he was like sweet and he was like thing there. And then um, if you listen to the song, we don't need no nuclear war. I couldn't even get the harmonies because I was so nervous. I'm like, all right, just make her sing the melody. Yeah. We need a Holocaust. Ooh, Holocaust. And um, that whole nuclear war album. Yes. You hear me on it mm. singing my heart. So you did more than one track on I the album. One, and then, you know, the funny thing, when I started going like to Gossy now. Yes. And uh, um, this time when I was doing background vocals, I wasn't mm. really nervous, so I could sing the harmonies. Because, yes. you know, you go to country, you sing with, you go to church, you go sing the altar, the blood that Jesus shed for me. I may look a picnic, I may hold my harmony good yeah. enough. Don't draw with me, I may hold the altar. <laughs> Way back, I may hold my altar, so I can sing harmony, but by the time I went to Gussie now, mm -hmm. I became like part of, you know, honing, getting back myself. Yes. After, after Exed, after, um, well, going to Extra Murals. That's yes. when I quit school again and um, started singing. If you, the song, Amiru Ragamuffin, mm -hmm. they hear, you hear my voice. You run, ting, here. And you run things over there. If you listen good, yes. A lot, lot of shabba. Vocals. Yeah, man. A lot of shabba ranks. Oh, whole, yeah, the backing vocals are shabba as well. A whole yeah, because slew sometimes of a lot of a lot of the giants were going to go see at the right. time. Gussie mm. were like session, session. Me, Pam, JC. It was That's me, Pam, Pam Hall. And, Pam Hall and JC Lodge. 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 Yeah, I didn't sing on telephone, Lord. Lord. Mm. Oh, um, okay, telephone, telephone Lodge. Lodge. I, and we were just. I was there. Gussie would call me and everything. And I did a lot. And then I started you now recording for Gussie, mm -hmm. like two songs. And then at that time, you now Jermaine and Gussie was at 56. Um, all, all Oprah. Mm -hmm. Bob was at 56 Oprah. Yes. 56 all <laughs> all Oprah. Oprah. Yeah. And I went and, um, no, let me go back. I started recording for Gussie, started meeting Erskine Thompson, and I, everybody started getting signed. And I paid myself. Met some, I met some um, Virgin executive okay. and heard about the um, Karen Wheeler thing. Mm -hmm. Paid my money to That's England. That's like soul to soul now. Right, audition, got the part. Awesome. But Don Taylor and Erskine Thompson hated each other. Don Taylor was Bob's manager was at the time. manager that started managing mm -hmm. Jersey B. And then um, Erskine Thompson, I don't remember who Erskine was managing, but Erskine was big in the um, thing there. Went there, got the part and uh, they hated each other and then started doing some demos, which never worked out. Yes. And then Erskine go, you know, Nadine, go back to Jamaica. And I started singing, doing, um, doing, um, ooh, 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 I never want to fall in love. And then I did, um, Action was a demo, actually. Mm -hmm. 
I remember when when I met Taro. Taro was so young. Yeah. A little kid, because I was I'm older than Taro. Yeah, man. So when we do action now, them laugh off of me because through me they love dance. During all that time, I am going to Edna Manley. Oh, you went to Edna? I even decided that I was going to go. In the, it was in the evenings. Yeah. I was part-time student. Yeah, you really love learning for true, not you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doing dancing. Yeah. So by the time now, when action, um, we did action, I was dancing for storm because them times they know dance of, and you know, you were a young woman, yes. you said dance was our music, you know, at that time. So, yeah, the transition was like that. Mm -hmm. to, to, so, oh, what a life. <laughs> like what I'm speaking about is so what's much. The, what's the current name for the Uwa the track? The current name, there are two names. You have Wicked and Wild. Wicked and Wild. And you have Wicked Dicky. Wicked Dicky. That's a wonderful story. <laughs> <laughs> you did um, Wicked and Wild I thought, was before that, action. I thought, was it during the time? It was during the time when I came back oh, okay. and I was doing like more dance songs. Yeah, so what was the reception to Wicked and Wild though? Wicked and Wild was a nice little hit in the dance yes, hall, it man. Was. Mm. Not only in the dance hall, but in the um, overseas ethnic market. market. Oh, okay. And it started creeping into the internet. I was, you know, I created a, my own buzz for myself mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. action. Yes, yes. Because, you know, at that time I think, was Babyface released? Mm. All them tune the baby yeah. face and no me love, oh, me love. Yeah, one piece of them song this ah. <laughs> So how did the link with the great terror fabulous come about though? Yeah, but the link with the great ter <laughs> He is indeed great. For me he's one of the best DJs at Jamaica's ever no seen. No doubt in that man. Okay, let me tell you how it gonna So I sta I started doing demos more dancehall demos, you know, because you know at that time Shabbat done the place. Mm -hmm. So Erskine was like, okay, so you have a uniqueness uniqueness about you. You know, your your R and B is your you know, your ride the rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know the roots in America because my roots family come from roots family. Yeah. So you ride the rhythm like a lizard panelim <laughs> and you win come now like you sing and all of that. Yeah. So he said, more you go back to Jamaica go do some demo. And one of him and um, Dave Kelly was working with Janet Davison at that time. And I went in the studio, met Tero, stood up there, Dave, and uh, yeah, was was action. And Dave told me how, because it was written by Dave Kelly. Okay. How he wanted me to the sing great it. Dave. The great Dave. <laughs> the great Dave for true. Yes. And um, when we did action now, and then put me, be <laughs> put me behind the microphone. And I'm skanking. And it's selection. Ten, me say me dance a whole action. That's why it sounds so bubble. Pop, 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 pop. Dave and Tara laughing up because they thought it was. I don't know why they thought it was so funny. Action has lasted for years upon years and has become one of the classics in the industry. What did what did that song do for Nadine Sutherland? Well, it's still keeping me relevant. <laughs> it's like sometimes I'm like, like New York, living in New York, They're going to New York. I never lived there. I got a job there. When I went to New York, when I got my job there, then I, that's when I recognized the enormity of that. action. Like sitting here in Jamaica, it's just like, I didn't even know the enormity of my song because action was still playing on pop stations mm -hmm. across well, New York, but I hear across the states, across the world. Not on our ethnic station, but on urban and pop station. And I didn't know. So when I went in, everybody, like Chinese, Japanese, white people, black people, all kind of people, Arab people, mm. I was known as the woman who sing action. action. And they're like, oh my God. Yeah. I never knew that it was just the kids that I know was, you know, when I became the director for the performing arts. Yes. They knew action. Yeah. Everybody knew action. Everybody knew action, man. And I was like, <laughs> for me to have gone and really just like live this reality mm -hmm. was one of the most beautiful things for me. Yeah. Mm. You're a part of action. Mm. I want some action. <laughs> I want some action. 
I need some action, tender satisfaction. My chemistry is flowing. Can you cause a chain reaction? I need some action, tender satisfaction. My chemistry is flowing. Can you cause? Let me get her part. Because I bet room bullish, you know, and that's enough. She wants to make love her and look her up. So, man, I make love to woman like a war in my go. Woman, I'm a ball in a gun. <laughs> mad, classy. Mad, mad, yeah. How are things with you and Terra though? Wonderful. I love mm. Terra. You love Terra? I love Terra. Mm. I really do. Terra and I, from, for like several years, it was me and him going everywhere Where? promoting action. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we developed a bond. Awesome, awesome. Um, wicked and wild. Mm -hmm. You're not giving me the night yet. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. I never wanna fall in love, never wanna fall in love. We can have well. With you, we can do a good thing, see. <laughs> but Nadine, you and Terra also were a part of, in my opinion, the greatest multi artist collaboration in the history of Jamaican music, mm. dancehall music. Right. I'll do anything for you. How did that song come about? I was signed to Electra at that point because of action and they were going to, you know, Snow yes. at an album. And it was me and Snow of a song. It's on, it's on, everything I speak about is mm. historically. Yes. And it was me and Snow. I will do any, anything just for you, make you feel. It was Snow and I. And then that was the remix yes oh so that kelly. was the remix that was so the remix so tony kelly was the one responsible for that that was the remix so he got everybody together oh my god and we have to talk about how talented all those djs were because <laughs> them create everything i be a on giant in an S oh so nobody never sit down and write no. nothing everybody came and just write and just shot it's why when they my shot is when they might do the song when they might do them take yes that's how amazing and how talented so they are. So being a Bojo, Louis Culture, Terry Fabulous, Snow, Culture Knox, yeah. all of the man them in a studio just yeah. got deliver. Just got deliver. And film same time. Not a go yeah, because go the right. video was, was yeah. in this the studio. Them not go home, go right. Them not go home, go think and process. Them just stay right there, so And just right and down the place. That's so bad. You know what you just do? You have given me now a greater appreciation for the song with me have as the biggest multi artist collaboration in the history of music, you know? Yeah. That's so fierce. Wow. Them you there are some talent. No mud. I'll be a giant still. Legends cause Boji is there, Beanie is there, Terror, Louis, like <laughs> when last you talk to Snow? Long time ago. Long time. time. To snow, you know? <laughs> But Snow, I'm happy for Snow. I think Snow had some recent success in the Latin market. Yeah. So, you know, I'm happy for him. I think he's in something with him, Farmer. Oh, okay. And you said the original song was a collaboration, a duet with you and Snow. And myself and Snow. And what was the title of that song? Anything for you. Oh, okay. So Same it's just thing. Anything for You remix. Anything for You remix, yeah. Ah, wonderful. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. That's how it started. It's online. Brilliant song. It's Brilliant song. Nadine, let me ask you a question though. Because when I sat down and I was doing the research for the interview, because we know the songs but we still have to get ourselves together, it became apparent to me that Nadine Sutherland can work with anybody really because some of the, the, the biggest songs that you have done are collaborations. Yeah. So the remix of I'll Do Anything For You, um, Please Me With Spraga Benz, Action with Terra Fabulous, Wicked Dick, um, Wicked Dicky with Bojo Bantan. <laughs> what I'm going to do with Bojo Bantan again? Yeah. What is it about Nadine that makes her, when she go inside the studio with another entertainer, everything click? I don't. I think in that time, I think what I was the go-to girl. Mm -hmm. But the go-to girl because I think in terms of my tonality. Yes. And because I can't ride the rhythm like a lizard upon a limb. But <laughs> 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 before I dance, I really done it. Yes. R&B, anything. I was so versatile that, you mm. know. But then it was always, I think, is the contrast. Yes. 
True. I think that's what True. it was worth. Because I tend to have an extremely feminine yes. voice. And most of the DJs. Some big voice. Right. So them always say, me sued on. So them bring sweet. As all them say, sweetness mm -hmm. mixed with gangster. Yes. So it was like the juxtaposition, the contrast mm -hmm. to me. You know, and them always are trying to make me sing pretty. <laughs> So, except Dave, they try to rough me up with. Man, I feel with him like, no, 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 no. no. Because yeah. you know, say, no, you and I want to gangster, but people don't know, say, yeah. you have the little rude girl side, you know. I, and I was initially, I was like, but Dave, me, I think about my granny and my father, <laughs> what am I going to say? Because it it's the most like, you know, man, I feel I'm wicked for please me. Yeah. I, and I'm so happy I sing that song. You, did, you are. Why? It's because it just really just like, a part of who I am because yeah. there's this element of you know I can't be like you mm -hmm. know yo don't deal with me <laughs> so I'm glad yes so yeah so the great Spraga mm -hmm. and Nadine link up how did that collaboration come about Dave again Dave Kelly Dave again the great Dave Kelly Dave, <laughs> Dave again and this time I was like he wrote the song he wrote it Feel up, feel up, me not to play. If you no love a man, don't bother try. Me no have no time for the four funky guy. Tell your daddy, I love it, I love it. <laughs> I love it now. Then, yes. then it was like pulling, I was like, Dave, oh my God. He was mm. like, Nadine, come on, come on, sing the tune. They get hooked for that song, you know? I mean, man, I feel wicked to please me. Got me, I want girl, no easy. That you can't say. come with no idiot style. Me, I want girl with no smile. Gwe! <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part. <laughs> Again, another classic right there, so. Yeah. Another classic. And mm. you and Spraga still link up and yeah, thing. Mm. You and Buju again. Mm -hmm. That's chemistry from do anything for you and stuff to. Yeah, I wrote my part and he wrote his nice. part. Nice. And it just worked. Yes. Yeah, it just worked. It was just a song. To me, I, I love that song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that Me and Buju song. So, Buju now, the remix of, of Dick, Buju song was Dicky. Dicky Dicky. Dicky Dicky. And mine was Wicked and Wicked Wild. Wicked and Wild. OMG. <laughs> and it was remix now to Wicked Dicky. Wicked Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> What is the, the story behind that collaboration though? You know, because I'm a scientist is on the lead. <laughs> yes. The story behind that collaboration is a, one of the funniest stories, I think, in reggae music. Because I didn't know. I had no idea. The answer my drop yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> I had no idea that the song was remixed. I totally, Oh, you did not know? No, I was in England doing demos. Yeah. And, it's um, not like a Donovan remix a song, this is a Andre tell me, I used name Andre tell me. I thought it was Dave and Andre tell oh. me. So I really don't know whose idea it was. Oh, so there was no consultation? I said, I don't know nothing. I <laughs> don't know one thing. But I tell you how I get for no no, which yeah. is a funnier story. I was in England doing demo scene um, in London on Ladbroke Grove. Mm -hmm. I don't remember my friend took me to a Jamaican um, record store. And I went in there and somebody congratulated me on my number one reggae <laughs> record. <laughs> Your number one reggae record. And I'm like, with Bush Banton. I'm like, yeah. I've, I've never done a song with, and that time, you know, you just, I've never done a song with Bush Banton before. Mm. The man say, the man was thinking, I'm really mad, you know. Yeah. I wonder, I hope in my life, you and him hear this, mm. that him can understand. I really did never know because me and the man almost are cussing at the thing, you know. Because yeah. I tell me, say me do song with Bougie Bantam, and me are like, I don't do no song with Bougie, Mr. T. Me yeah. tell you, know, I want to cuss over there. Me say, me not do no song with Bougie. Yeah. The man says, see your song, yeah? Like him, I say. Yeah. And I can't understand now that he must be like, I want to do the girl, yeah? Or something. So did you listen to the song in the record store? Uh, when was it first? The so you man put oh. the third the song on the turntable. <laughs> I said, see you, Sonia? Yeah? Vex now with me, you know. And me there, still feeling a little bit. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I just heard, pom, pa dum, pom, pom. And I hear, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Then I hear, Bujo, diggy, 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 diggy. 
I and just I'm over like, the yeah, and I'm standing that. there. <laughs> That's when I realized that I had the number one song with Bushu Banton in London. Thanks, Donovan Jermaine. <laughs> we know that about it, man, man. So that was one of the moments where I yeah, said, like, because the music can not in. You know, I have to do that for the music, you know. Yeah, exactly. that's what apparently, right? So, what was, did you have a conversation with Bojo after that about the song? We have never spoken mm. about it. Or <laughs> well, they never perform it together yet either? The only song Bojo and I have ever performed is ah, and that's online. Woo! We never performed. Mm. And that was a nice performance, I must say. The chemistry was yeah, real. So, yeah, Bojo never performed what I'm going to do either. No, that's how we perform. Oh, okay, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that Madison Square Garden, and people always Madison think, Square Garden. People think it awesome. was cute. Thought it was cute yeah. because it was like, what am I gonna do? Me again, the usual <laughs> Jux yeah. being and me being ultra feminine, <laughs> and it was really a nice performance, and I think it was pretty cool. Mm. It would be nice if you ask Bujo about the song there and see what I'm about it though. Like, well, wiki dicky. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is his view on it? I don't like, even know Bojima even I love you. Bojima has so much hits, you know. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Such an icon. So I don't even know. I don't even know if he knew. I don't even know if he know the story. I was just like, oh, really? Like me, no. It was shocking to me. He yeah. probably was in Jamaica recording. I was in London, basically living half of the mm -hmm, time there. Mm -hmm. So, but Nadine, you would have scored classics with action and anything for you and stuff. But probably the signature song for Nadine, when people said Nadine to the land, probably the song will come apart from action. You know, action is Babyface. Babyface. Babyface leads number one, and yes. I'm in love mm. leads number two. Mm. And some other songs are about Story Babyface. behind Babyface. I don't know. <laughs> All I know was listening to a lot of Whitney Houston and mm -hmm. a lot of R&B songs. And uh, I don't know how Babyface, you know, I make up the story that I was going out with this guy and him gave me the song, but then I don't know if it's old age catching up on me and I don't remember. <laughs> but who, who did they record the song for? Fatis. Fatis Burrell. Fatis mm, Burrell. Mm. And I remember this thing that Beres was in. The, Beres was in the studio. I was directing it. Babyface! You know, this is the tone. I was such a Whitney Houston yes. fan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now listen now. Yeah. Will you stop? I think I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. So I'm not even trouble you. Yeah, but I forget peace of that. We have so many things in common. Yeah, we are two different people. We just love being around each other. Yeah, we give each other space. Sweet like syrup. <laughs> <laughs> you would have performed all over the world. Yeah. You remember the first time you left Jamaica for music reasons? I remember distinctly the first time I performed was a Bob Marley memorial. Mm -hmm. In uh, the first time I went to foreign. No, was that the first time I got foreign? As the first time was a, probably was the first time that I go to. Yes. Was um that Bob Marley thing in Miami, like 1981, was it in May? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the first time I touched down in Miami, in America. Yes. So that's the first time, I will, it will never leave my memory because mm -hmm. I just remember like, <gasps> Miami! So that's mm -hmm. it, I was, at, was, at, I was at around 12. Yeah, oh yeah, you're still yeah. young. During the career, you would have worked many places. Where is the biggest stage in your head in terms of crowd that you have walked on to perform? Japan. As when you have Japan span, it's all 30,000 people you have performed mm -hmm. with, you know? Yes. So Japan was always like draw some massive, massive crowds. crowds. I don't know about now, yeah. but back in the days when they have Japan splash or reggae sun splash Japan. Yes. You know, so. Massive crowd. Mm -hmm. mm. Where's your favorite place to perform? Japan. <laughs> Why do? I just always found the um, Japan then. I haven't yes. been back in years, but I found Japan mystical and beautiful mm. and very like exotic. And you know, yes. to, I used to for me when I you know when I went to Japan, I was very like 
1920 and I used to yeah. go to the Buddhist temple and yeah. go there and light the incense and pray and all of that. I just found Japan fascinating mm. each time that I've gone there yes. and get to see the Yakuza's when yeah. I was younger. I, I, I think I saw a geisha back, mm. way back then. So I just found it, you know. So Japan is your favorite place yeah. to perform. Nadine, generally speaking with entertainers, I have come to realize that an artist's most successful song, commercially or financially, may not be the artist's favorite song. Mm -hmm. Of all the songs that you have recorded, which song is your favorite? The one where you vibe more time in your quiet time and hit in your head and hit your, hit your meds? I can't really say, you know. Um, I've become over the years a fan of Nadine Sutherland. Mm. I listen to her and I, you know, I'm like, oh girl, you're a good songwriter and you're a good singer. I can't yes. really say. Yeah, have a you song, Nadine, man, mm -hmm. where you sing often, man. One of them where that song there do something for you. Which one? No, I don't mean, know what you're going to tell me. No, no, no. Hey, listen, what God. That is so which one. Which one? Because I'm so confused. Yeah. I'm so confused. Yes. So all the songs you appreciate and most and of stuff. my songs that mm. I have, you know, when like when I I know when I write a song. Yes. Than when somebody have written a song for me, I can hear it because mm. there's a special like Babyface I wrote. I'm in love by Part Road. There's a song that I have named Never Knew. How can I still love you when another woman's having you, baby? I wrote that one. All of my songs that I write have this. Well, not anymore. Because in my blood, in my blood, Marcus Garvey, in my blood, that's certain, not, you know, more political thing. I mm -hmm. know my songs that I'm writing as an older woman tend to be more social commentary. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's or more conscious, centered. Conscious more. I can't even say conscious, but, you know, my song, my new song, Chatty Chatty, mm -hmm. released on the Danger Zone. Chatty yeah. Chatty Mouth. Blonde, oh, you a chat, no hope on a me. All you walk do create any me. You feel pretty, but you so ugly. So <laughs> it's, it's like, I really, it took such a long time for people to stop seeing me as like the sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. Yes. And yeah. still, I don't even know if that concept of, I think I'm, I grew into to be a more, I don't want to use the word radical, just, you know, but I am more interesting now because mm -hmm. there's so much. I've lived life, so there's the sweetness, but there's also the little gangster. There's also the little sexy woman. There's also the elder. There's so yes. many different aspects of myself that mm -hmm. I am free now. Yes. To show. Yes. And say, yo, if you like me, you like me. If no, I show it artistically, show it in every capacity. It's like me not care, right? Yes or no, because guess what? The variety out there, you know. True. You want to choose, you choose. Mm -hmm. You like me, you like me. If you don't like me, scooby away. You don't take no notes of my life. Yeah. So you reach this level of assurance as an artist, and you just say, you know what? I just have to do what I have to do. We can't matter with anybody. We don't like me, you don't like me. Yes. Many persons can identify with Nadine from her time as judge on Digital Rising Stars. Well, I didn't do that to don't. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember how that came about, how you, how you come to be a part of the judging panel? I came back to Jamaica um, after being in the States, living in and out in the States for around five years. And uh, they just came to me and asked me. I went on the audition and I got the job. Yes. And then on. We, we, Anthony Miller, it was Anthony Miller, A.J. Brown, and myself was the first round of judges. Mm -hmm. That was for one year, and then it was replaced with Clyde McKenzie. Yes. And we just totally rocked the place. Mm -hmm. You know, we had great chemistry. It was just awesome. Clyde is now my brother from another mother. Yes. Anthony is my friend. I, <laughs> I ask him every day if he like me. I still think he don't <laughs> like me. But we get on. Yeah. He might see this, and I'm like, I call him every birthday because him and my father share the same, same birthday, birthday. Mm. and i'm always do the same thing it's so done uh, oh yes it annoys me now. oh yes yes you always call me every year i said yes i have to because it's my father's birthday and uh, i always will remember and i love you and i know you don't like me but happy birthday oh you stop it <laughs> many persons he's a good person though yeah. guys and i am joking he's a good person and i like him very much many persons have this notion about anthony as a judge where he's just this Monster. What was it like working He's with him? He's not a monster. I mean, that's how Anthony is in real life. <laughs> Anthony is very straightforward. Yes. That's who he is. He's like, you like it or you don't like, like it. it. He's not going to go around, you know, and uh, 
I, you know, one thing I like about him, he's not a hypocrite. Yes. So you know exactly where you stand. Mm -hmm. He's not going to put on no face to make you comfortable. Mm -hmm. But yet still, he has a lot of decency and honor and integrity yes. about himself that a lot of people lack yes. right now in the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. After completing your master's in 2017, you got a job in the United States. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? What, you know, that, that experience will always be in my heart. Those kids that I got and was in charge of and the whole, that whole time was so magical for me. There we were and these incredibly talented and gifted kids that had so much potential and I so wanted them to thrive. I so was just like thinking about Bob and what Bob did for me and I was like, you know, and we were rocking. Those kids, we were rocking and they were believing and we, you know, we, I remember when we did a graduation for and, um, the performing arts kids and we were singing three-part harmonies and we were sing, singing, see, and I tell you all about it when I see you again. My kids were singing harmonies. They were, and I was, was a proudest moment. Mm -hmm. What you I mean? We had such great, talented singers and I had this little boy called Malachi who, never ever went to a dance school and was looking on YouTube and doing extension and spinning and all of that. And no, when I left Alvin Ailey and uh, Dawana Smallwood was running him down mm -hmm. and his, da his future as a dancer is like, it's there. And you have it's just so many, the kids were just awesome. And we, you know, I had kids and I, w I made him dream to go perform in arts high school. Yes. And I had two kids who, we never got really got the LaGuardia, which is the number one, but I got a kid that was with me into the Francis, what name? Francis Natural School for Performing Arts and Professional Performing Arts. And we're not like a big school or whatsoever. Yes. But the kids had talent and I was there wanting them to succeed mm -hmm. and just wanting that whole program to be yes. successful. So it was an incredible time in my yeah. life. When you got the job, what was your job description? Director for the Performing Director Arts. Director for Performing yeah. Arts. Three months after the second year, because the first year your contract was renewed and three months into you Why resigned. everybody know my, my life like that? <laughs> you see, that's what I... <laughs> I don't know my life too much, you know. I know you probably won't get into why you resigned, though. No, but you no, came no. back home. I came back home. Mm -hmm. But I must say that I want to big up doc, Dr. Mullins who gave me a chance. I felt that we... We were doing so well and it could have been so wonderful but in some sense you look at the universe and i came back home not knowing it was going to be in the dean 40th yes oh and so knowing, you weren't paying any attention no, to that i wasn't even paying any attention to that i was so passionate mm -hmm. about my kids and where i wanted us to go yes because you know i was like they're my little ashe mm -hmm. oh, the kids <laughs> yes, that i had yes, i was yes, like yes. you know and i wanted to develop them and i wanted the school to be like you know, like be the, be the school yes. for performing arts, not only well, academic, mm -hmm. academically too, because the principal, she was doing a great job, yes. but also be known yes. for the performing arts. I was so invested in it, but I wasn't really thinking about mm -hmm. me and my 40th year. And I wasn't even thinking. It wasn't, it wasn't even done in my head. Yes. So that's what happened. And I came back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. yes. Nadine, as an entertainer who has had a career spanning four decades, what would you say is your single greatest achievement as a musician? I survived. Hmm. <laughs> I survived. Yeah. What was it like though as a female back then and through the years as the music evolved? I mean, you know, I, I remain true to Nadine Sutherland mm -hmm. in every aspect. Who I was showed up, yeah. you know, and um, sometimes I wish that the journey wasn't easy, but the journey wasn't the hardest. Yeah. Because when I put it in context now, that you can, you know, at this age and stage, you can evaluate and look at what life can bring to people. Mm -hmm. Life really, I, I was not sheltered from not experiencing yes. life, the ups and the downs. That's what life is all about. And I wish somebody told me when I was younger to say, whatever you, the fairy tale that they constantly project towards you in society that's what this is life is all about it is a lie because mm -hmm. life is life it's gonna come with the sweet it's gonna come with the sweet the sour, sour. Mm -hmm. it's gonna have some pepper moments mm -hmm. 
it I go have some salty moments. Yes. But if you equip yourself and know how to ride the tide, if somebody was saying to me, then I probably would have some of these stuff nobody really can say to you. Yes. You have to, you have to learn, learn it. it. So like looking back, I can't say the journey was rough. I had a question you didn't ask me, I'm gonna forget to the question when you asked me. <laughs> yeah man, let me see you answer the question. I got got caught up in the <laughs> philosophical Yeah. So I was just asking but was it really and truly extra challenging as a that woman, you're a female in the industry? I think it was. I think it was. Mm. I think it was. I think, um, I don't think that in terms of where I was coming from and the kind of thing I was representing, you know. Yes. You know, them like them and them, them feel saying I must invest more in them and them. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but in terms of, and sometimes I feel like I never really got a chance to do some of the stuff that I want to do because yes. of my gender. Yeah. Like, they will take a chance for a man. Your, your song not sell this time, they will take a chance for you a second time. A woman, your song not sell goodbye, dismiss. See you later, because it's a notion in their head that yes. you're, you know, you can't compete effectively. Mm. And then how that changed for me is when I went on stage. Mm. When I went on stage, in zone. and I saw how people reacted to me, yes. I said, there's a disconnect. Why is it when I go on stage, People clap me and applaud me. And, Yet still, and the thing no balance. yeah. So the thing no balance. Mm. The only time when it became an equal thing is when I step up on the stage. And I'm like, listen to me, man. I'm a sing my tune them. Yes. I'm a sing my tune them. And nobody, know, remember back in the days when they get finky finky clap. There you go, so mm. nobody does that. Then, then <laughs> you know. You guys haven't lived long enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? This means that you get really like a yeah. fingernail clap. <laughs> Looking at the journey, Nadine, is there anything that you would do differently if you were to do it over? There is no. No regrets? I always, no, I have no regrets. I haven't done anything that I cannot sleep at nights. And that is one thing. They tease me and call me foul. Yes, people, my family, I foul and call me. Foul. Me roost early, them oh. out of all day. <laughs> they call me foul. And, but I used to say to people that there's a time when I was still slandered, I was so slandered in the heights of my career and I could not, I was like, if it was a slanderation that was like, you know, um, slanderation that's my word guys it was in this area it was a slanderation that was international and everywhere and mm. it was a lie yeah. and i will defend it to the end of my day it was a lie i've never ever and i don't afraid to say my mother said must have said me never ever take drugs in my life mm. i don't have that kind of personality i don't have that kind of cons it's just not me and anybody who knows me and yes. truly know me know that me can't even hold on two glass of wine much less mm. anything else i don't even smoke weed mm right so it was so awful and terrible and it was just degrading and humiliating some people who i thought loved me well them there wasn't any friend anyway because them never know me yes. some of them never get to know me that way <laughs> so it was wonderful to them to say yeah you're going like say nice yes uh, uh, yeah so a lot of that stuff was happening people let's get real some of those that was in the slanderation were sour grapes, okay, bitter sour grapes because they could not slanderize my inside. Let's get real. Mm. So that's what happened till it just, you know, at the time Whitney Houston was yes, really doing her stuff thing. and I guess they needed a Jamaican equation and what happened was that it kind of was just like, because it was so much, I just, you know, I, I allowed it to get to me for a while. But then I always say I regret that I allowed it. But if that didn't happen, I would not found my strength yes. and my voice again and stand strong in my truth mm -hmm. and say, this didn't happen to you, this life, and it made me strong. Because I'm like, you want to think that way about me? Screw you. And I'm going about my business. After that, hmm, she got a master's. She got a director for the performing arts. She's still doing her hits, have hits in England, going around look like i'm younger at my age and stage of my life so guess what all of the haters i shut you up mm, mm, mm. <laughs> scooby galang goodbye nadine every artist 
whether before they enter the industry or during their time in the music, have goals in mind and targets that they want to attain? Is there anything that you haven't achieved as an entertainer? Yeah, yet? I want more money. <laughs> so it's straight up. I want to get paid. Yes. I haven't suffered. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have my, you know, I'm yes. doing relatively okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not on the road begging anyone, but I think that financially, I really just want some, you know, more. I think what I have done in the industry, I'm deserving to get paid mm -hmm. for my performances right now. I'm putting out new songs and I want to get paid. Mm -hmm. So it's as simple as that. And I'm really, the funniest thing, I never really ran down money. Mm -hmm. It's the weirdest thing. My, 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 my father said, you never really ran down money. I've never really done anything unnecessarily to bring money to me. Yes. You know, I'm just like, do it. But no, I really think that, am I running down money? Money is running to me. Yes. <laughs> you would have worked with some of the legends in the industry. Terra Fabulous, mm -hmm. Bojo Bantan, um, Louis Culture, Beanie Man, right. a lot of people. Is there any artist out there that you have not worked with yet that you'd really and truly love to do a song with or songs with? I would like to work with Rihanna because she reminds me a lot about myself and Beyonce too. Probably mm. the coloring, but Beyonce kind of energy. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me so much of myself in terms of the singing and the energy and the dancing. Yes. You know, she reminds me a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. um, right now, in terms of... Locals. Locals. Not really. Mm -hmm. It would be Anybody nice come. to see you and Barry do a song for some strange Wouldn't reason. Wouldn't that be lovely? I'm see that hit there. Boy, that would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. Work on it, man. You never know. Jabi. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Versus is so awesome. So. Legendary singer, man. Legendary, Legendary singer. Legendary. Mm -hmm. Forever. Family life, Nadine. Mm -hmm. Kids? Nieces and nephews. Nieces and nephews. Brothers and sisters. Yeah. I, I grow all of them. You if you ask them. them, I'm right now, I'm like the mother of my family. Yeah. But may I ask you, do, how come you have never been married? I have, have children. Both. You know, so there's no reason why I've never had children. I just mm. never really um, had somebody that I wanted to have children with. Oh. Because I didn't really want to just have kids with a full full man. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And then leave, left. Well, you know, if, if Jar didn't want that, it would have happened. But yeah. my thing is that nobody came in my life that was worth me yes. being impregnated for. Mm. So. It, that was just it. Yes. And I never was a woman that was like, I don't go into anything fleetingly and I half ass. So if you bring that bull crap to me and you come in with your foolishness and want to put me down or whatsoever, I'm going to kick your ass. That's where my gangster thing come in. I'm like, yeah, you know, I've done this all by myself. Yeah. So basically I've never, you see, you know, there's a woman called Eartha Kitt and she summed up my life perfectly when it come on to men. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm not open up, you know, I'm yes. open and receptive to the love of my life, if he comes. Yeah. But Eartha Kitt said one thing. <laughs> Eartha Kitt said, the men that I've met, they never wanted to lift me. They wanted to put me down. Mm. So they're more invested in your, her vagina mm -hmm. than elevating her as a woman. No, I'm speaking truth. <laughs> and not feeling intimidated when you shine yes. and not there to support you as a woman to be this way. It's no competition right now mm. or whatsoever. They're invested in like scoring and when they score they feel like they're king and they wear a, so that means that the next thing is that they might ha uh ha -huh, or come and slap you and I have my last <laughs> and I'm like don't joke with me. Yeah. So that's where it is. When I meet somebody who is compatible, who will speak and we are seeing each other this way, then you are my king because mm -hmm. you're not thinking that. Yes. I'm going to be this to make you this. Yes. And the insecurities of some of our men, they can't see a woman flourish in her glory. True, and she will true. love him straight up and full. She will love you, you know, to the ground you walk on. But you have to feel like you have to do this. Mm. You have to feel like you have to do this. A lot of our men. True. You can't stand so equally and speak. In a, you know, it have to be like, you know, in terms of this patriarchal society, you know, women are perceived. I'm sorry. And people, don't get it twisted. I love men. I'm not a woman who love women. Let's yeah. get it all right now. I am a lover of men. 
So I'm not gonna go to anything else except men. Yeah. So that's why I don't have a relationship because I want somebody who's gonna see my queenliness and don't try to take the crown off my head. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm saying. Of the collaborations that you have done though, Nadine, I don't remember a collaboration with a female. Wouldn't that be great? Tanya oh, Steven. Link? You asked me who oh, my what? The girl eh? Yeah, man. I'm such a big fan of Tanya Steven. You know who I like? I like Leela Ike. Leela Ike, she bad for sure. She bad as yours. Yeah. Tanya okay. still at the, yeah, man. at the MoMA. At the MoMA for me, man. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Tanya. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we should and I were going to work together, but I don't know what happened. Oh, and there were plans too. We were going to do something, but oh. I guess it never materialized. Mm, probably I never had a right time, man. And it was the right time. Never she knows right that I'm a big time. fan and she knows that I will work with her and that's forever. Yes. If it was a music though, apart, I know that you are now qualified and stuff mm -hmm. and you would have done some work outside. But if it was a music, what would Nadine Sutherland be doing in terms um, of her career? You know, I really don't have any idea. Like the funniest thing I said to somebody, if you put me to do anything, I'll do it. And mm. I've proven that to myself. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm going to be a surgeon because I'm not qualified. But if you put me something and you say do it, that is one quality that I have as a person. That's what made me successful in academia. Mm -hmm. Because you put me in something, I am not going to fail. You're going to excel. I'm going to go. I'm going to go through. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do the best. Mm -hmm. I'm going to deliver at the time you say I must deliver. And uh, the only thing now I'm balanced because my masters, uh, I used to go not eating. And that was a wrong thing for me to do in terms of how I went hard. Because yeah. then you have to go so hard. But I really just was like invested in it and all of that. But anything you put me to do. So I really can't say what I would what I would have done. But all but I know is that anything that I will I will do, it yes. will be done passionately properly. and properly. Mm -hmm. You celebrated your 40th celebrating. year. Celebrating. You're celebrating your 40th year in the industry. What are some of the events or things that have surrounded said celebration? All right, so I want to have an, um, I can't even say because coronavirus yes. has totally just made everybody, uh, we're planning something. Mm -hmm. I'm planning something. I don't want to say it yes. because the future right now seem a little bit, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit. We can't even make plans because, you know, yeah. so many shows. And right now with my shows, I don't even know what's going to happen in the next month. Yes. So we're just like taking a pause, riding this tide, not really saying anything because it has totally ceased a lot of stuff that was in the machinery yeah. and planning. Mm -hmm. So what has Nadine Sutherland been up to recently? New songs. New Chatty song. Chatty is one. Ain't No Sunshine is one. I'm working with Danger Zone Music. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to finish the song, this album, with Rora Stone Love. I, you know, I totally am dedicating and coming, doing shows mm -hmm. back to the music and just like, re well, not revamping, being the truth of who I am right now. Yes. I don't think anybody's in my lane yes. in terms of my age, my stage, who I am, the kind of personality that I am and my lifestyle. Yes. Nobody not really in my lane and I'm very happy. I never was a competitive person though. Mm -hmm. So just doing the Dean Sutherland, doing me, being my authentic self, trying to deliver that to my fans, um, trying to deliver my age and stage without apology. I don't want to be a mama young girl. Don't want to be like that. Yeah. Quite happy with my, happy that I still am fit. Happy that my mind is where it's at. Yes. Happy that I wear I think that every woman has a crown on her head, mm. so we're not competing. Yes. And just like going out there and doing what I'm doing. The album, has it been named? Rory, 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 I want to watch this. No, no. No, not yet. No, not yet. Mm. And I probably do, I don't know. Um, we're talking, I'm, ta I'm speaking with Danger Zone yes. right now about our project, so. Mm. Just a lot, a lot of music to be coming yes. up. Nadine Sylvina Kruger. A cougar? Yeah. Actually, no. But you remember in that song, <laughs> I, said, song yeah. I said, I am not a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. respect cougar. Yes. And I think I have a lot of cougar traits in me. <laughs> not that I love young men. I love men my age yeah. and older. Okay. Right now, yeah. <laughs> Probably a little bit 
in my age group, probably it'll be like, a, I give a five year and all. Yeah. That's, you know, mm. five years beneath me. Okay. But I don't really like, no, let me not, no, let me change. I was not a cougar then. Yes. But I am not blocking myself mm. from love. Yes. Let me put that out there. Because I was going to say, I don't really like young yes. men. I'm not blocking myself from young. No. From love. If a young man is going to have my son's age, or I don't have a son, <laughs> and he could be my son, yes. then probably not. Yes. <laughs> I just brought that up for you to speak about the song, still, because that was I'm a well-received song. Kuga don't care, you will see the... Hey, people love Kuga song, you know? Yeah, but it, it took on the street. So for the persons out there, though, Nadine, who wants to get in touch with you, whether it is for bookings, whether it is for dub plates, whatever it is, um, how do they go about doing that? Well, you just write me on Instagram, you write me on my fan page, Nadine. I answer, and I know John John's booking is doing my bookings now, that's Shelly Coran. Yes. It's, her number is on my Instagram page. And uh, I'm getting management together right now because I want to step out differently. I want to yes. really step out like a team because I have projects coming out. My new video is coming out, Chatty Chatty. Yeah. That is coming out. I have a lot of new stuff coming mm -hmm. out. So write me on my page. Get in touch with Shelly, as I said before. Write me now. But I hope that in the next, like, two to three months, months my yes. management structure and all of the structures that I'm trying to get in place mm -hmm. now will be in place. Yes. And for the persons out there who want to get the music, where would they go to get stuff from Nadine? Aside from YouTube, I mean, where you going to make uh, money from? iTunes, iTunes uh, Spotify, for, okay. Vivo, so all the digital all platforms. All the digital platforms, mm. which I'm getting myself or more organized awesome. now because it's not like back in the days and you're like, you know, I spent a lot of years studying mm -hmm. and then I'm like, you know, so I'm getting myself organized, coming, I can't say coming out back because I was never out of it. I was always doing performances yes. here and there, but in terms of videos, a lot of people haven't seen a video from me in a long while and I've seen a lot of stuff. They've seen performances. I did a Notorious Riley performance um, in December and I just did a Bob Marley. Those two yes. high profile. So they're seeing the performances mm -hmm. and yeah, we're doing our stuff. Empress Nadine, first I and love that Empress. First and Where foremost, the from the perspective of me being an educator, I must say congratulations in attaining your masters. Being at the age that you were, you know, some mm -hmm. persons at that time would say, you know, I'm done with that school thing and that school thing and on my own. Congratulations Thank on you. that. Really admire that. And also for your longevity in the music a career spanning 40 years, especially as a female, that is really and truly admirable and commendable. Thank you. And thanks for the work that you would have put in and the contribution you have made to the music. And I really am glad you say that. And just going back to me and my life right now in terms of putting out music, doing my masters, my message is really not only to people in my age group saying that life does not end. I am here waiting for my honey bunny to come you know what i'm saying to be dating yeah. and to you know find a a nice man yeah. and all of that life does not end no, i'm being very very serious what i'm trying to say <laughs> i can't be extremely hilarious you know? <laughs> my family always say nothing is an yeah. actress i'm just trying to say i got my masters like in my 40s now i'm in my 50s and uh, life you know, I'm exercising, I eat right. Life does not end. To the young girls who are looking on. I remember when I was younger and I saw a woman and she was like 50. And I'm like, oh my God, she's so old. And I saw a woman when she was 40. You're like, yeah. Jesus Christ, she's old. Yeah. Times, well, times have changed. A lot of women are, you know, we have invested into um, just, I guess, all the years of dancing and all that, you still kind of keep your body, mm -hmm. still keep your face, you still can do all of that. I mean, my face is older, of course, yes. but we're not trying to negate looking older. We're not trying to look younger, but we're trying to be the best yes, that we can be. So that's yeah. what we're trying to give the message to younger girls that life does not end. A woman you're sitting down or a man sitting down, you can take up yourself at any age possible and have a life live until God say it done. Yes. The best is yet to come. The years, you know, if you sit down 
and you're just like, oh my God, it's finished. It will be finished. But if you sit on and say, there's more life in me, there's more life to live, there's more life that I want to experience, and you just go out there and just like do it, things will fall into place. And that's my message right now mm -hmm. to people of the world, it's to younger women especially, that this society love to put you in a pasture, mm -hmm. like if you're not 25. Then put you in a pasture. You can't be all. Yeah, you're old and all of that. We are trying to say no. And you hear some young girls and you know they call me like she old, she old. Do I look like I feel bad that you call me old? Mm. What is bad to be? I am old. Hello, I'm not 25. I am okay. That's not an insult. Mm -hmm. If you think I'm old, because when some people think, some people still call me baby, because they're older than me. Yes. If you think I'm old, that's not an insult. Yeah. So stop and get over yourself now in thinking that, you know, she old or whatever, or my age. That's your problem, honey child, it's not mine. And you, nobody's gonna make me feel ashamed of my age, ashamed, ashamed of my stage, ashamed to make me feel like I can't go on that stage and mm -hmm. rock it and suck it and do my best. You mm -hmm. sit in, take, I went to Williams said, take several seats. <laughs> Hi, this is Nadine Sutherland and I am still like pinching myself. I'm pinching myself because it's 40 years since I've been in the music industry, been public, started my public life. I'm just thinking that a silly little girl from Above Rocks was doing an imitation of Tina Turner and singing Peter Tosh's Buckingham Palace and I won. I won Tasty Talent Contest in 1979. I'm the first winner, actually. And to see that after that, the Cinderella life started, I was introduced to Bob Marley, and through his vision, I was able to do my first song, Starvation on the Land. And here I am, 40 years after, I started background vocal shops, singing with the great Peter Tosh on his Grammy Award album, No Nuclear War. Sometimes I still pinch myself, royalties, royalties that I've been able to work with. You know, going through and having action, not a bag of mouth, being a judge on Rising Stars, um, being the director for the performing arts for the Challenge Charter Group. So many things and so many adventures, so many songs that I've done that you have appreciated and you have loved. And give, you have given me a chance to express myself as a songwriter and as a dancer and uh, so many other aspects of the arts. So I give thanks right now, it's still unbelievable. I'm getting a little bit emotional. I just wanna say thank you all for embracing me all these years. Thank you all for sometimes making me see myself from even a better perspective because sometimes you see me bigger and larger than sometimes that I even see myself. So I wanna say thank you, bless your hearts. Thank you so very much, 40 years. Uh, more records will be coming. I will be doing a lot more. But thank you for everything. Thank you for accepting me in your homes, in your hearts, and in your life. Big up. Empress Nadine, I really and truly appreciate the opportunity for document the journey, the story. I know this is the third attempt at doing so. Isn't and it wonderful? Yes, mm -hmm. and it has worked out perfectly. Wonderful day, everything. Yeah. So thanks very much. Really and truly appreciate it. Yeah? Blessings every time. Coronavirus hope. Coronavirus hope. Coronavirus hope. Coronavirus hope. Coronavirus Elbow settings, right? Yeah, man. Teach them, we are going to reach them. Teach them, we are going to reach them. I need some action, tender satisfaction. My chemistry is flowing, teach them, got them going. I need some action, tender satisfaction. My chemistry is flowing, teach them, got me going. Teach them, teach them is my baby face. They got some cute baby face. Teach them is my baby face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now listen now. Teach them, we're gonna reach them. Teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.